Mr. Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. Other than one meeting this afternoon with Her Majesty the Queen, the diary for the rest of my day is remarkably light. <laughs> I'd also thank him for what he said about equal marriage. There are 30,000 gay people in our country who in the last um, six years have been able to get married, and I think that is real progress. I'll never forget the day, actually, in number 10, when one of the people who works very close to the front door said to me, uh, I'm not that interested in politics, uh, Mr Cameron, but because of something your lot have done, I'm able to marry the person I've loved all my life this weekend. And that was... Uh, there are many amazing moments in this job, but that actually was one of my favourites. When it comes to women Prime Ministers, I'm very pleased to be able to say pretty soon it's going to be 2 nil, and not a pink bus in sight. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> we are working hard to do what we want, which is to give a guarantee to EU citizens uh, that they will have their rights respected, all those who, who have come to this country. And to be accused of sloth in delivery by the right honourable gentleman, let's just take the last week we both have been having these leadership elections. We got on with it. We've had resignation, nomination, competition and coronation. They haven't even decided what the rules are yet. <laughs> Democracy is an exciting and splendid thing, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. Uh, I was talking of the economy. The Home Secretary, again, she said, many people find themselves exploited by unscrupulous bosses. I can't imagine who she's referring to. I'm glad he mentions emails, because actually I've got an email as well. Um, now, I got this, I'm not making this up, I promise. I got this on the 16th of September 2015 from someone called Judith, and she said this, please, please keep dignity and not triumphalism during the first PMQs today with Jeremy Corbyn. And she gave this reason. She said, because Tom Watson, who may oust Jeremy Corbyn, is a very different kettle of fish. He's experienced, organised and far more dangerous in the long term. She goes on, so sensible, sober, polite answers to Mr Corbyn, let him create his own party disunity. <laughs> After this is over, I've got to find Judith and find out what on earth happens next. I'd also like him to pass on my thanks to his mum for her advice about ties and suits and songs. <laughs> I will certainly send my, his good wishes back to my mother. She's, he seems to have taken her advice and is looking absolutely splendid today. It gives me the opportunity to put a rumour uh, to, to rest. And the rumour that somehow I don't love Larry. I do. And I have photographic evidence to prove it. Um, sadly, I can't take Larry with me. He belongs to the house and the staff love him very much, as do I. Uh, this session does have some admirers around the world. I remember when I did his job and I met Mayor Bloomberg in New York and we walked down the street and everyone knew Mike Bloomberg and everyone came up and said, Mayor, you're doing a great job. No one had a clue who I was until eventually someone said, Hey, Cameron, Prime Minister's Questions, we love your show. <laughs> Nothing is really impossible if you put your mind to it. After all, as I once said, I was the future once.